Okay, we're back now. I want to give you some of this information. The information can be documented if you want to buy some of this particular information, talking about this subordinate creator who is not the original God. You need to get Bentley Layton's, Bentley Layton's Gnostic Scriptures, which was dug up in 1945 in Egypt, which predates Christianity. And in so many words, the Christians stole another person's religion and then tried to kill them off. But in 1945, these particular Gnostic scriptures was dug up again. So you can find out about this in Bentley Layton's Gnostic scriptures. Also, I have my book, uh, Titan 1 and Titan 2, mm -hmm. that deals with these. I'll give you a copy. Okay. Um, that deals with these, Titan 1 and Titan 2. And it also has the actual manuscripts. The, the Titan II is called Gnostic Mythology, and it has these Gnostic documents that was dug up in 1944, which was the story of a dollar broth that I was just telling you about. Now it quotes in this particular uh, it quotes in this particular book, and I and I'll show you a quote. It talks about this. This was so anyway. This particular entity broke away from the heavens. Because he didn't bother to look up to see that there was gods before him, he just thought that he was the god of the universe. And Adal Abroth, which is also called, he called Yahweh, says, was boastful and arrogant and exclaimed, I am the father and the god, and beyond me there is none other. But Sophia, which is also a form of the same great mother over and over in different languages, hearing this cried out to her son, Lie not, Adal Abroth, Above thee, above all thee, is the father of all. The first man, the son of man, and man. Now in the Greek mythology, before Zeus comes into being, which comes into being, which is the father of the Greece, Greek mythology, and that's where you get the origin of the word Jesus, it comes from Zeus, mm -hmm. J, mm -hmm. which is Jupiter, mm -hmm. in Rome, which is Zeus, mm -hmm. and Zeus, which in Greek is Jupiter. They took the both words and put it together, the J, which is no J in the Hebrew language, mm -hmm. and Zeus, Zeus, or Zeus, and you get the word Jesus, or Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now Zeus, that's why I never say the word Jesus, just say Christ, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's not even a Hebrew word, it's a Greek word. Mm -hmm. Zeus, before Zeus ruled, the Titans ruled. Mm -hmm. And the Titans were the gods of the universe. Zeus comes into being in, a, in so many words and burns up the Titans in a long war mm -hmm. and then take the dust from the Titans and make man out of the dust. Mm -hmm. So in the first of this book, they say that in actuality, in Titan 1, they say we need to go beyond the Olympian pantheon to the gods who they overthrew, which were their parents. So we are the parents of the ruling entities in heaven. But even in your Bible it says this hell and this heaven will pass away. Mm -hmm. If everybody's trying to get to heaven, why is it in the Bible tells you that the heaven gonna pass away? Mm -hmm. The hell you trying to get to a damn place and ain't gonna be there when you get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say that the kingdom is gonna be on earth. Mm -hmm. And we are the ones that are supposed to establish the kingdom. No. But, okay, but I just want to say this one last part. I want to say this one last part. So Zeus overthrows the Titans, and the Titans are turned, and when he overthrows them, he burns them up, and the dust from the Titans was used to create man. Mm -hmm. And we are the, the dust from the Titans. Mm -hmm. That's the Greek mythology. That's the Greek mythology. Okay. Now, in trying to deal um, with the African origins of Christianity, Yeah and looking at the way the Europeans changed mm -hmm. uh, much of the, uh, the concepts of the mm -hmm. structure uh, that was uh, out of the Egyptian world, you know, the yeah, Egyptian system, right. to, and especially when we talk about the Nicene yeah. Council and all that, um, can you explain to us how, um, how what we call Christianity evolved and the difference that it had as a Coptic Christian 
Yeah. And then a European Christian. Then okay, the Coptic Christian, the, the Coptic Christianity. Yeah. The story with the Adal of Roth, I told you the subordinate deity, that's coming from Coptic Christianity. When they dug these 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 texts up, the Gnostic texts, they were translated from Coptic. In so many words you had, and I'm gonna give you two, I'm gonna give you the whole story on how this thing went down. Uh-huh. In so many words, originally you had a group of people who were the original Coptic Gnostics out of Alexandria, Egypt. Which had been there since the beginning of Egypt, but they were called Typhonians then, and they gone through a series of, of things. And so basically, Coptic just means later day Egyptian. Okay. They had their cult all the way up into, and when I say cult, I'm not talking about in a negative thing. We're talking about a civilization all the way up into Rome. Mm -hmm. Now, Rome at the time. One one thing before you get to Rome. Mm -hmm. How did it differ from Isis, um, Horus, Osiris, and the Egyptian pantheon? That we okay, had? let me explain something to you. When we get the Egyptian pantheon, mm -hmm. we're getting most of the story from Plutarch, which is a Greek writer. Mm -hmm. When we look in the Book of the Dead and we look into most of the Egyptian things, you got to understand when you look at the large monuments in Egypt. Most of those things are written in ritual. So we don't get the true pharaonic thought. Mm -hmm. When I gave you the hermetic text, mm -hmm. that's true pharaonic thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But come to find out, this Gnostic thought that I'm talking about here, we find it also, that pieces of that is in the her her um, hermetic text. So let me explain what happened. Sometime at the Temple of Isis, or Aset, and I'll give you two, two versions. The Temple of Aset or Isis, a couple of years before it closed, maybe within a hundred year period, mm -hmm. they translated a lot of the works from Metaneta mm -hmm. into Coptic. Mm -hmm. The true Pharaonic thought that I'm telling you about is the stuff that's in the Coptic. Now, I'll explain in a few minutes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on what it is, uh, uh, on, on what it is. But when you get the Book of the Dead, it's hard to find out what the Book of the Dead is other than the general Isis and Osiris story because it's written in ritual. That means it was written for the priests, and it was a ritual book of spells and incantations. Mm -hmm. To get true a pharaonic thought, you need to get the hermetic text which is the stuff I was giving you at the beginning of the thing, okay. the lecture. That's true pharaonic thought, as well as the Gnostic text, which is true pharaonic thought. You can't get into true pharaonic thought through the Book of the Dead because most of the people, because the Book of the Dead, number one, is a ritual book, and it's an esoteric book, and most of the black people are not scholarly enough into the metaphysical world to understand it. You see what I'm saying? But, but you can get it there's, there's, there's several ways you can get the true pharaonic thought. The Coptic version is this Gnostic stuff that I was just telling you about. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to go back to that in a few minutes, but let me explain something. During the time that the Hebrews, which is black people from Ethiopia, they got tribes of different islands, but it's always the same race. Mm -hmm. The black Hebrews was in Rome. Raising hell. The Romans at the time had had Romulus and Remus and some form of Zeus and all that. But they, over the course of years, their pantheon and their true meaning of the religion started fading. Now, you must understand in the ancient world, just like you have Democratic Party and Republican Party, mm -hmm. your religion was also a political party and you ran your government based on your ideology, based on religion. So as a result, in the Roman world, because of Romulus and Remus and a form of their Zeus pantheon or whatever, Jupiter, they had lost, over the course of years, it started deteriorating and they had lost the cohesiveness of the understanding of it. Okay. It, remember, it was, remember I told you first it was originally a black religion, mm -hmm. the Etruscans, mm -hmm. who give you Latin and Greek. But over the course of years, 
2,000 years, they lost the meaning of it. Meanwhile, here's these Hebrews over here. Raising hell. Black people. In the height of the Roman Empire. The Roman citizens start looking and going, shit, if, 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 if the if the government is based on if the government is based on your political and spiritual beliefs then if your spiritual belief starts to fade and deteriorate then your government will start to deteriorate so the other people the roman citizens start looking at the hebrews and started admiring them and saying hey shit we might well join them or we need to get some stuff like that meanwhile Roman citizens was Paul and Josephus. The Romans say, man, we got to get us some religion. Like them Hebrews over there. Them niggas is cutting up. Mm -hmm. The Roman government say, hey, we conquered Greece. Greece conquered Egypt. And Greece plagiarized and got all that stuff out of Kemet. Mm -hmm. But now we conquered Greece and we got all this shit logged down to the T and lying around. Mm -hmm. Won't you get some damn scholars and go up in there and translate that shit and make our own damn religion. Mm -hmm. So we got the same shit the Hebrews got. We got the Egyptian stuff but at this time it's in Coptic form. Meanwhile, they got a group of people called the Gnostics that came out of Alexandria, Egypt, that's worshiping the same Christendom of this religion. The Romans was like, no, we're going to get our stuff, but we're going to tailor it a little bit because we're not necessarily interested in the, the spiritual ramification. We're interested in world domination through it. So we want to we wanna keep the same scripture so we can go into scripture and see the spiritual connotation, but we want a religion that number one, we can rule motherfuckers with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they get Paul, Josephus, and a whole bunch of these scholars. Now you must understand that a, a, a scholar, or you must understand a priest at that time, was more advanced than your highest PhD in the society, a nuclear physicist. Mm -hmm. He ain't got shit on no priest in the ancient world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bad boys. He make a nuclear physis, physicist and a PhD look like a damn dumbass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when these people put some shit together, it's put together. Because mm -hmm. we're talking about scientists that's putting these shits together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they got Paul, Josephus, who was a Hebrew that defected and started working for the Jews, I mean for the Romans. Paul was a Roman citizen. They go in and they get all these texts that they caught it out of Egypt by Greece, but they now um, control Greece. And they put together the New Testament out of this ancient Coptic and Gnostic material, which before it was Coptic and Gnostic, it was Metanetta. But they know, and they put all these elements together in it. Meanwhile, they got these other group of people over there, and they bust out saying, we got Christianity. These other group of people over there, the Gnostics, say, wait a minute, hey, wait a minute. We got that shit too. That ain't your shit. That's our stuff. Mm -hmm. So what they do, they kill them all off. They're like, you know, in the, in, the movie, in the movie they got with a robber, he go, he, with, with a person, you got two people, he'll, he'll take one man's stuff and steal it and then kill the man off. Say, kill him off and nobody knows. So they kill these people off and took their shit. But it was a modified stuff, and the reason why they had to kill the people off because the people was like, wait a minute, that's modified. You got some controlling stuff there. We got the true stuff over here, and that's what this stuff here is that they found in 1945 in Egypt. Mm -hmm. All of it has is Egyptian origin. That's, you know. But it's interesting they found this same stuff in Egypt in 1945. So meanwhile, they that's killed the these. Dead sea you're talking about? No, this is called the Nag Hammadi Library or the Gnostic text. Mm -hmm. is the, are those the, texts different? From yeah, the Dead Sea Scroll was found in 1948. This was found in 1945. This is more advanced than the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm -hmm. 
it's more of it. It's more advanced than the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm -hmm. We talking about some shit that they can give you a million years worth of history in about four or five pages. Mm -hmm. How advanced it is. Mm -hmm. We talking about each line of the damn text might scan a hundred years within a fucking sentence or two. That's how advanced it is. That's the fear on thought I'm talking about. That you couldn't get from the Book of the Dead, but once they translated it into Coptic, we get this, what they were really talking about. And that's when this subordinate deity comes up. But anyway, they killed, so anyway, they bring out this whole Roman thing, and all of a sudden, they got an instrument that they can dominate the world with. Because they have, Paul and them have gone in and tailored this shit. That it can be used both ways. But Paul and them, the one that they did, was so, it was close to the, the original so they had to do the Conference of Nicaea and eight other conferences to modify it. You see what I'm saying? To modify it. Yeah. yeah. But what we're talking about, what is the difference between, you ask the question, what would be the difference between the, the, the modern ancient, day Christian yes. model and the ancient model? Right. The Christian model, the modern day Christian model, was tailored to take advanced concepts that goes on the inner workings of the body and make them literal. Mm -hmm. So they say sublime mythology makes grotesque history. So one thing they did to make it literally historicalized everything. And none of that shit was historical. There was never Jesus over in the, in, in the what you call it. I want to ask you a question. Now let's look at this. You a black Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You ought to know whether hell or damn black man came and taught amongst your ass. Why is it that you can't find no black Hebrew or no modern day white Jew to bear witness to the Jesus thing? You would figure if a person going to give you the Messiah, that's something hell to take. Everybody talk about a, Jew, a Jewish Messiah, but yet you can't find no Jew to bear witness to that. That's true. Why, why, what is that? Because the Jew knew, like all the other ancient people in the world, See, we're talking, the Jew knew that, that, first of all, that was some Roman propaganda the, of the Hebrew. He knew, just like the Egyptian knew, just like the Greek knew, just like the Me Mesopotamian knew, like the Babylonian knew, like the ancient African knew, that the Christ that is to come can only come one time in history. First of all, there's two things. First of all, Christ is a title, and we all are the living Christ because Christ is the level we can rise to. But the Christ, mm -hmm. the true Christ, mm -hmm. that is supposed to be the end all and be all, he can only come one time in history. Mm -hmm. And that's at the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Now I'll tell you why I know this. Because I understood that alchemy didn't know this. And you can quote me on this. When the true manifestation of Christ comes, the physical earth would cease to be. For the mere fact that we got a physical earth, whatever um, um, teachers or whatever couldn't have been the true Christ. The Hebrews knew this. The Hebrews said, wait a minute, hold on. We get our origin in Egypt. And the Egyptians knew like everything else. Horus comes. And Horus comes to kill. To kill? To kill. Well, Horus comes to kill. kill. The true Christ never taught love. That's some Roman bullshit to keep a people docile. All you got to do is just take my word for it. You go and study any, you can go to Greek and study Hercules. That's the Egypt, that's the Greek Horus mm -hmm. or Apollo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can study Horus mm -hmm. or Heru. You can find out something about Hebrew. I'm going to tell you what this is. You won't find no text in Egypt where Hebrew is talking about love. Hebrew does one thing and one thing only. Avenge his father. He kicks ass. That's all he does. Mm -hmm. He kills motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's, that's what he does. 
The Greek version is Hercules, which is the same story because it comes. He don't do but one thing. From the time he born to the time he die, he kills everything in sight. Cleaning house. So the Hebrews knew. They knew that when they was talking about a person coming by, talking about all this love and all this kind of thing, they, uh -uh. they said the true Christ coming back to kill the world. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Get the house in order. He's the God of Ecclesiastes with the blood on the sword. He's the God of Revelation. Mm -hmm. They had blood dripping from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So but the Romans came in. On the end of time. The end of time. That's the only, that's the only time the true Christ can manifest on the earth. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we are all a race of Christ. Christos anointed when we all have melanin. But the Christ that we're talking about here is this seed that I was telling you. Now, they have isolated this thing. They can tell you this stuff in science. Mm -hmm. In astrophysics, they say there's a seed mm -hmm. that is, is the only thing that is not, that is in, this, the only thing that's in this universe that's not of this universe. It's, of, it's from the outside known universe. Mm -hmm. And when that seed manifests itself, it will explode everything on this planet and destroy the universe, and we'll go back to the original existence. If any man came saying he was the Christ, he couldn't have been the real one. That's why the Hebrews to this day, whether well, even the converted ones, but they're, they, they, they copied the original black ones, never been witness to the Christ. And the Arabs over there is like, that's bullshit. The Egyptians, that's bullshit. That's Rome and that's Paul in them. Because what Paul and them was trying to do was trying to get the monopoly mm -hmm. on the Christ that everybody in the world had. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the Romans say if we can get the monopoly on this Christ, we can rule the world with this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So they literally tried to corner the market on the Christ that was all around the world. It is irrational for a Japanese man to worship a Jewish savior. It is irrational for a blue-black African to worship a white man. Just as it's irrational for an Eskimo to worship a black man, where everybody in their mythology got the same Christ. But the Romans came in because they wanted to dominate the world. And they tried to get the monopoly on the Christ by saying that this is the only true son of God. And, and basically this person just comes up and tell you how to do all this love and all this crazy thing. But guess what? The text came up in 1945. The true Christ, the one that comes from the Coptic Horus. He don't say none of that shit. In the Gospel of Thomas, it was like, which is when they got out of the library, they, they took out a conference of Nicaea. Mm -hmm. It's found in these new te in this text. And, mm -hmm. and they, in the Gospel of Thomas, he says, um, they say, uh, Christ, tell us what kind of diet you want us to go on. He said, don't lie. Why do what you hate? Blessed is the man who eats the lion. Then the lion becomes a part of the man. Cursed is the man to get eaten by the lion and a man becomes a part of a lion. Uh -huh. He goes on, they say, tell us about the kingdom of heaven. He said, you'll know the, you'll know the end when you know the beginning. Shit, you done lost the knowledge to the beginning. They say, they say, well, and then they said, um, they, they told about tell about the end. He said, you know the end if you know the beginning. They said, tell us about the kingdom of heaven. He said, heaven is all around you, but you drunk, you can't see it because you're looking for these two eyes, and you ain't looking with the spiritual eye. Mm -hmm. This person in here is a straight-up revolutionary, a no-holds-barred person that don't even deal with the crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So clearly the text that they dug up in 1945 that dates back to Coptic Egypt and only in the Medanetta is a totally different thing. And 
that's the original one before the Romans stole it and turned it into the New Testament. But don't get me wrong, the New Testament got all the stuff in it. It's just that for the first time you can't go by page for page, but you can go into the pages and find the same stuff. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. The Bible is still a viable thing. You just can't go by from A to Z, but you can go into the pages, and it's all there. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Know how to interpret. Yeah, that's the difference. We, you can't go by the basic theology that's drawn up from the Freedmen's Bureau, which is the way they was going to teach slaves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we still on now. Mm -hmm. Same old good old time religion is good enough for me. You can't go by that anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to go. You have to go into the book. That's what Ahmad Elijah Muhammad said, and that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all there. Mm -hmm. Now let me show you the real mystery of the book to make the book comes alive, come alive. Mm -hmm. Take the book. Take some old deity that you're supposed to follow. Take him out. And put yourself in the role of the Christ. And that's what the book is originally for. It's a guidebook for your soul, which is the Christ. Yes. So the person that they're talking about in there is you. Old body, new body. Old Testament, New Testament. If you take the book, just as I have done great works, greater works ye shall do. Is it not written in the law that ye are God's? And the scriptures cannot be broken. John chapter 10, verse 34, 36. So it means you're supposed to take the book as an esoteric book. And everywhere you see Jesus or the Christ, you identify that as your soul. Then the book comes alive. It's just when you start following it and thinking some cracker coming back or some black man coming back. Mm -hmm. Black man come back saying, I'm the Christ. I say, okay, good. You take these bullets. <laughs> Now, you take these bullets, and you take them, and don't be on that flow, then maybe you have a chance. I might follow you. But the, the, the esoteric teaching was a mystery system book, just like the Book of the Dead, which is a passage to the soul, and you, you are the Christ in it. So it's a role-playing book where you get through the journey. You go on a journey, and at the end of the journey, you become illuminated. That's the real message, and that's the difference between the Egyptian one and the other one. At this time, it's a scapegoat thing. They tell you to worship somebody instead of you becoming the God. Yourself. Mm -hmm. Yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between it. Now, can you remember what I cut you off from? You were in a continuation. If you don't, I'll ask you another no, question. No, I, I, yeah, I remember. In so many words, what I was saying was Based on all of the ancient ones, mm -hmm. they all talk about a story of the gods before this, this, this God. The God of the day or the God of the living means that in actuality, the God of these two eyes, which is a cheat, he creates this illusion around you, which is a hologram. The God of the dead is inside of you. Where's the God that died? Jesus died on the cross. Where's the cross? If you stand up and put your arms out like this, mm -hmm. that's the cross. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. Now where's the where's where, where, so where's Christ? Christ is on the inside of you, which is the third eye, on the cross. Mm -hmm. That's the cross that Jesus died on. That means that your soul is on the inside. It died long ago when you fell into the physical realm. And it will be resurrected again through the Kundalini energy. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what this thing is talking about. Um, that's what that's that's what this this thing is talking about. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So give me some more questions. You know, I want to deal a little bit with this uh, black Greek. I had that picture there. I want to use it. Yeah. Yeah, me hold it. You got it on, on you. Um, I, I I have it. Do I insert it in? But uh, you said the Etruscans. The Etruscans. The Etruscans. Uh, let, me, so let, let me go through a little bit of history Greeks of that. Were, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let me go through a little bit of history of that. Before I get to that, let me explain something else. Mm -hmm. The oldest 
system of worship in the world is called Typhonianism. That's why you ain't heard about it. So you got all these other people talking about the oldest stuff, but the real stuff you ain't heard about. It's called Typhonianism, Ophidianism, and Draconianism. You hear the word? You figure there ain't no word, but the white boy tell you your idea is a little draconian. Well, if it's a word that don't exist, why is he using it in his doggone dictionary? And this is the cult of the dragon. The dragon is in the constellation of Draco. Mm -hmm. The cult of, and that's the form of the great mother. Uh -huh. All the other goddesses, the great mother, take it from this one great mother. But she has a son. It's the mother and the son, and that son is Sirius, the star system Sirius, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are known as Soot. Now it's interesting, we had this draconian and stuff up until 1904, 1907. See, Gerald Massey, when he went into the British Museum, he translated a lot of this stuff. And you can get all this in his works. But after 1907, after he translated um, Book of the Beginning, 1881, and then Natural Genesis, uh, 1888, and then finally in 1907, he does Ancient Egypt, Light of the World. All this Typhonian stuff disappears. They lock it down, and only people who have, have, have access uh, to it is your, um, is your secret societies. And they go and they go to Nubia, with a lot of this Typhonian stuff, and they cover over 200 temples at the Aswan Dam, Aswan Dam which had this Typhonian stuff in it, as well as they found Hebrew letters all over them temples. So it was the vested interests of the Jews to cover it up because it would show the African origin of the Hebrew. Uh, 200 temples. Yes. And I'm you know the white man don't, down. yeah, you know the white man don't, don't cover up nothing. Mm -hmm. Not a, not, so you know it had to be some real serious shit for him to cover up 200 temples. And they digging in Egypt this day and they got 200 temples up under the Aswan Dam. Up under the river. See what I'm saying? That was Typhonian stuff. Now the Typhonian stuff of the great mother and the child developed, matured, and declined even before the first monumental phase of Egypt where you, the big buildings of the, the, the dynastic Egypt. The dynastic group came in which is your Ra worshippers and Osiris and they replaced it, the Typhonian. And they wiped it from the monuments. And Osiris takes on the attribute of soot. And Set becomes his nemesis, or he becomes his enemy. Before, but Set is the oldest god in the world, and Typhonian's attributes before it comes the Typhon and, and excuse me, Osiris attributes before there was Osiris used to belong to Set. All this is in um Jeremiah's ancient Egypt, Light of the World, as well as um uh, Albert Church was evolution origins of Christianity, mm -hmm. uh, evolution origins of religion. Mm -hmm. So Set is the oldest primordial deity of all time, which is the star Sirius also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Osiris becomes the star Sirius too, mm -hmm. as well as all the other Egyptian deities. So one priesthood throws takes the, uh, overtakes the other priesthood. So. That priesthood, Apep, is the great dragon also. Apep was replaced by Ra. So the Typhonians at this time travel up into Mesopotamia and find, find Babylon, Babylonia, Samaria, Chaldea, and on into Greece as the Etruscans. But they were the... What time period are we talking about? Oh, man, we're talking about... Um, well, the Typhonians were basically your pre-dynastic time period, so it's before 3000 BC, about roughly. Um, well, Manetho says that there's 500 pharaohs in the dynastic period, which is 3000 years, and there's 800 in the uh, pre-dynastic, which was 5,000 5, years, and roughly, he said, we're talking about about 8,000 years. The pre-dynastic is the Typhonian. It's the Typhonian. Pre yeah. It's the pre-dynastic. Mm -hmm. So they travel up into Mesopotamia and all that, but they also, from Mesopotamia, they become the Phoenicians. The now these are still all black people right now. Ain't nothing, nothing never was, nothing but black. 
These are the Phoenicians. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the Phoenicians travel into Rome mm -hmm. because the Phoenicians becomes Eturia and Eturia becomes the Etruscans or the Troy, the Trojans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the Greek went to war with the Trojans. They right. That's the later day Indo-Europeans going to war with the Trojans and wiped out those Etruscans. But the Etruscans find Rome and Greece, which I showed the picture, and they find Rome and Greece and establish the Greek language and the Latin language. And the first Greek mythology, Zeus and, and Apollo and Hercules, is a black mythology. It's just as valid. Now, Greek philosophy was stolen from Egypt years later. So don't mix up the time cycle. Greek mythology is black. Greek philosophy is plagiarized Egyptian philosophy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so don't do the time cycle. When I talk about Hercules and Zeus and Apollo and Perseus, that's black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not later. It's the it's, it's just a it's just the Phoenicians' religion of the Typhonian stuff. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, what did what the Phoenicians are the Etruscans worship? They had the religion of the whole Olympian deities of Greece, which the later Indo-Europeans come in and wipe them out and then take their shit. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Now, this time period would have been around when the Indo-Europeans come in. It would be around uh, 800. Uh, it would be closer to the time. It would be, a, uh, uh, it would be maybe a couple of hundred years closer to the time that Greece comes into world history as this white 2000 BC. That would be around uh, five, uh, 500 BC. Yeah, you know, whatever the time thing is, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like that and all. So it's no different than, you know, everywhere you go, you got your first year Dravidians. It's the same story. You got your Dravidians, Indus Kush mm -hmm. in India, and then the Indus Valley, and then what happens? The Indo-Europeans come in, and they, because India is a big, place, they don't wipe out all of them, but you have, further to the north, you get a lighter type of Indian and Sakaas system going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Greeks never were all white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see As that. a matter of fact, when you see the Greeks, I now they got that. nappy hair. Yeah, I can see the Greeks. And if they got damn nappy hair in damn 99, then you know 2,000 years ago, they had to be all black. So we still talk about primarily a black culture, even with the influx of the Indo-Europeans. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They never were always. That's why Charles Finch say when um, the Greek has the, 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 the Greece, Greece, and the ancient Greek when they did the survey had a heavy sickle cell trait. So that means it had to be black. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. And that's the difference on that. You see what I'm saying? So, so that the Etruscans is that particular group of people, which the picture shows. I got the picture. I can run in and get it if you want. No, I'm gonna add it in. Yeah, add it in. Yeah, you got it. Okay. That, I got that. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what that is. Okay, that's 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 marvelous. Um, if we look at then um, when the the Egyptians or when the Africans finally lose power. What was it within that culture that um, that that get? I'll tell you what it means. Uh, what, what? Unfortunately, and fortunately, we're connected with nature, and nature goes on a series of cycles. Mm -hmm. And everything in nature, the force deteriorates and then regenerate. The problem why we got a problem with this is because still in our mind we got the Judeo-Christian mentality that the earth started 6,000 years ago. So therefore we figured that the time when Egypt came was relatively a short time. Let's put it this way. When the monumental Egypt that you know of as dynastic Egypt comes into play, it's over for the Egyptians. Listen to what I'm telling you. 
when dynastic Egypt, of what you know of, with Egypt as the civilization that you so much love, that was the lowest point for the damn Africans. Although this is the highest thing, the civilization that the white man can't even get to, that's the lowest point for us. Well, why do you say that? Because wasn't I'm going it when it they built the pyramids? Yeah, that? no, they built the pyramids before then. Now. Way before then. You see what I'm saying? Oh. They built the pyramids and the Sphinx at the same time. Now the Sphinx is carbonated ninety thousand years. John Anthony West gives you breaks that shit in the seventies. The pyramid and the Sphinx is one complex. They didn't build one after the other. The Sphinx is carbon dated 90,000 years. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about something Wait, older man. than that. Yeah. And that was built by the Typhonians. The pre-dynastic ones. I told you that oh. the Typhonians matured, developed, no, developed, matured, and declined long before the first monumental phase of what you know of as modern Egypt. Or what you know of as the Egypt that we all study, which is dynastic Egypt, or Kemet. Mm -hmm. When dynastic Kemet comes, it's over. We're literally talking about, well, even if we go by Manetho and he was conservative, he was just giving the Greeks something just to wet their tongue. Mm -hmm. They say, ultimately, you don't never tell a person your original origin because they can dictate how far you can go. Manetho said that basically we had 8,000 years. Then they asked Manetho, the high priest, well, what, who used to rule before then? He said, well, that's when a whole bunch of gods used to rule. The Afrocentric community at that particular time, one of... Somebody else quoted that, but what they didn't realize is that the gods that used to rule that Manetho talked about before 8,000 years, guess who they were? Guess who those gods were? Before Manetho? No, the gods that used to rule, he said that there was roughly 8,000 years between pre-dynastic and dynastic. They asked him who used to rule before 8,000 years. He said that's when a whole bunch of gods used to rule. <laughs> who the hell you think the god people. was? It was the same know. damn people. Yeah. Now let me explain what it is. Yes. yes. They got a they got a debate going on between the the evolutionists and the Christians. Mm -hmm. The Christians say the Earth is only six thousand years. The evolutionists say the shit is older than that. Yeah. Both of them are partially right. The Christians can back that shit up a little bit because the physical is about eight thousand years. Or something. But the evolutionists saying no, we even got things that's even older than that. This thing is about 13 billion years old. As the USA Today came out and said, well, we calculated the origin of the universe in about 6 to 13 billion years old. But I happen to know based on the Dogon and even the Greek thing that the earth was in the beginning before the universe was even founded. But I'll get back to that in a few minutes. I'm trying to hone in on what I'm trying to find out is how did a whole bunch of gods used to rule. Both of the evolutionists and the religionists are almost right, but they are not occultists or esoteric studies, so they don't understand the true history. You see, when the gods used to rule, you must understand that the earth was, was always here. It just wasn't always on the physical realm. It was always here, but as a gradual decline, it became physical. Mm. So when the gods used to rule, that was when the earth was not necessarily physical. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now Rudolf Steiner says that at one time the original world was a spiritual world. Mm -hmm. And basically the vibration slowed down. And as it slowed down, the composites came together, the elements came together, and as slow vibration, they came together and became more dense. And where our bodies became more dense. Our bodies became more dense. 
at one time the spiritual world was just as visible, visible as the physical, but the physical at that time was almost invisible. It was a little faint dim. Mm -hmm. As the vibration slowed down, the physical world became more vivid and more visual, and the spiritual world became invisible. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, those particular times are during the times of the Lemuria. They got several names. Hyperborea, Terra, Alcaborea, Atlantis, yeah. Mu, all of that. Yeah. They were semi-physical times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see. Mm -hmm. And we used to use, when you asked a question, that we used to use, how we used to use all of this, we had the full function of all our energies, the chakras, the third eye, the kundalini, and all that. After a result, after we had the full function, after we came into the physical, we still had the full function. Mm -hmm. But the ancients understood one thing, that they had a race before time. They had a race against time. They knew that one day that these particular spiritual records that is in our DNA would shut down and would go offline because we, as time went on, we started deteriorating where it become more dormant. So what they had to do, they had a race between time. That's what they built Egypt for. They built Kemet to record as much records as they could before this shit shut down and before our senses shut down and we just would come down dumbfounded. Now, I'm a, all this stuff comes together. Because I often wonder if the Africans was just as advanced as the Egyptians. You have to often wonder this. Why didn't the other Africans build the same type of society? Right. With all the large monuments. Yes. The Africans didn't need to build a society because they were very advanced. They had all that shit was in their head. It's just that they sent an expedition during the time of Atlantis at one part of the earth, mainly the center part, to build all the monuments so they can have when all this shit shut down. Mm -hmm. When this stuff start going dark. So in the center part of Africa. They built the monuments so that they could have the monuments of records of all the knowledge they knew once this knowledge starts to shut down because they had become more and more dense into the physical. All right, now, see, we were talking on the way, and I want you yep. to throw that in there because yep. you were saying that that is why all the stuff is spiritual and you don't see an economic system yep. and so forth. So explain that, because what you're saying is very heavy. It, it, now, they had, yep. they, they had seen, they had they see, I, I just took, I, I documented that the thrice great Hermes Hermetica by Copenhagen, Walter Scott and G.R.S. Mead, as well as the, the new Nag Hammadi Library, which is the book called the Nag Hammadi Library that they dug up in 1945. That prophecy in there about you being a, in a land and, and the white man will be better than you and you'll be treated as a common criminal. That prophecy is also in the one they dug up in 1945. So we do know that we can trace it back almost 5,000 years that they knew that one day they was going to go into slavery. Mm -hmm. If we know that you got 5,000 years to prepare mm -hmm. for something that's going to happen, you got a long time to prepare. And they did prepare because they had the advanced knowledge to know the future. Now, if we have the documentation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I just gave you some, there's tons of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did prepare. Mm -hmm. Even in India, they say one day the man will eat the sacred cow. Mm -hmm. They have a document over there. But they did prepare. So now, here we are in 1999. So pyramids and uh, all of these, uh, uh, the Valley of the Kings, the uh -huh. tombs and everything, yeah. all of this is a part of that preparation. All that. All your temples, all the papyruses. Then they gave it out to the world. They gave the Greeks some, they gave the Romans some, they gave it all to the world. See, they knew that later on that the, that the white man would come. If he didn't have no knowledge, we would never get the knowledge back. Now, let me explain something. Let me go in this thing here. If they prepared, when we look back in 1999, why 
if they prepare a way for us to get out of this, why we don't see no economic blueprint on how to get out of this, how to start businesses and all this stuff that we want so bad, why we don't see no physical weapon war between the how to build new guns to kill the cracker, why is it that the only thing that they had 5,000 years to prepare, why is it the only stuff that we get out of that is religious stuff? Yes. Got to have something to do with our because it's because, because the basic premise of the Osiris is he's a caterpillar, then he goes into the cocoon, then he comes out a butterfly. The cocoon stage is what we have been shut down and been living in all these years. Now, you don't come out of damn cocoon to go back to a damn caterpillar. So the whole Afrocentric community is off. We're not supposed to go back to Egypt and be Egyptians. Been there, done that. You're coming out of cocoon to be something, a metamorphosis into a new creature. The alien is us in our new form. So they were only concerned with the soul and what the soul was going to go through in the next paradigm shift because we had been on the earth for thousands of years doing the human thing. And that existence was over. So we gave it to the damn white boy. That's, we gave it to the damn white boy. That's why he was the last to rule. We knew he was going to be the most destructive. That's why we gave it to him in the last couple of years. So you got to notice one thing about history. Now just listen to me what I'm saying. The white boy has really only been ruling for a little over 90 years. That's true. First of all, he didn't rule Africa until the late 1800s. Correct. He had the slaves, but he, he took Africa in the late 1800s. See what I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. He was worn against his own damn self for seven or eight hundred years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He only became a world power mm -hmm. to dominate the entire world this century mm -hmm. and latter part of last century with the British Empire. Mm -hmm. So that means he's only had roughly about close to a hundred years ruling. And for, compared to what we have been ruling, that's almost like an hour. So you just got to look at the bigger picture of things. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everything is under control. He might run around this motherfucker, but he don't run this shit. Mm -hmm. We run this shit. He might run his little ass around this shit. The white boy might run his little ass around him, but we run this motherfucker. It's just that the African has been convinced, or the ancient one has been convinced, that he doesn't only in his damn mind. <laughs> Why is that? Because in the course of us getting hit in the head as slaves, we come out wanting the same little old material mess that he wants, which is nothing. Trinkets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know it doesn't have any value. Mm -hmm. He got to keep reinventing stuff new. And the Kabbalah says that the, the Kabbalah says that the true ones, they say the intruder will come. Now, what's an intruder? An intruder is a person that wasn't there in the beginning, that is there now, that's ruling over the original people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the Kabbalah says, A.E. Waits Holy Kabbalah says, and the intruder, he rules because he causes luxury. Mm. And he rules through his luxury. He's a chameleon. Keep changing the fashion keep changing the technology, and you keep running after the shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He calls his luxury, material possessions. Mm -hmm. So he really ain't the king of nothing. So they say the empire changes of the earth, but it only changes the outer appearance. He's the lord of illusion. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a lord of illusion. So in any way, what we're talking about here is why they only why they only use why they only came with religious material. 
because the religious material tells you in actuality we are hard-headed, we are looking to build a civilization to match his, and he has civilized barbarism. What we need a bunch of black capitalists for? We have been there, done that. We're trying to get to the next plateau. And that's the problem, what we do. We, we claim we so damn religious and we believe in Jesus and all that type of shit here. But it's like the old saying, everybody want to get to heaven, nobody wants to die. Mm -hmm. We want what we want and we want to be equal to the white man and not equal to our own God self. So I asked this question, did the Egyptians leave a blueprint behind if they had 5,000 years to prepare on economic freedom? No, they left spiritual stuff, and the spiritual stuff talk about metamorphosis, Osiris rising to the Heru, and the Heru is the higher realm. You see? Got any more questions? My brother, I think we've been thorough. You see, I can go some more now. I, hey. How do you say, yeah? Well, you know, whatever you feel the people need to hear. But these tapes, I'm going to put out right away. Mm -hmm. Because I think they need to be put out yeah. right away. Mm -hmm. Because the information and the knowledge is critical for this time. Like the other tape I held. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm still holding because I kept saying, that uh, you know when it's on. Yes, it's wrong. Um, what we need to do is also too is we have been programmed to think a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I've been coming to New York for the longest now, and basically um, from LIB to BLS, and basically we we say the same thing over and over and over again, but we don't push the mind. To think of those things that in actuality that is your fears. And that's the real initiation. So I talk about the dark side. But they said Isis, or Aset says, no one has lifted my veil. What does she mean by that? She said you didn't lift the veil and all because you are so scared of some stuff. And my goodness, after all we have gone through, we don't have no reason being scared of no devil or whatever. I figure hell got to be a resort area in a damn jacuzzi compared to this bullshit. But then again, when you study the Greek word "hyo" and the the Hebrew word, the Christian word "hell" and the Hebrew word "hail," mm -hmm. it means physical earth. Hylix or hell means the physical earth. The other words, the word Hebrew word comes from the word also the word "sheol," and the word "sheol" is the word "shell," and the shell and shell you from shell you get hell is the physical body. Mm -hmm. We live in hell, which means you're trapped in the physical body. Mm -hmm. So all of this particular mythology that we're talking about where we are scared of a damn devil as the scapegoat to, bring, to blame everything on. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Keeps us trapped. Our own fears. But if this white boy don't have a soul, what would happen to him? Good question you ask. So you done gotten into it another realm, and it's a good question you asked. I'm glad you said this. It'd be good to end with. What we live in is called a matrix. Mm -hmm. It's a series of emanations and electromagnetic pulses that does not exist. It's an illusion. We used to be the gods of the universe before our children took over. Our children, when they took over and they trapped us into the physical realm finally, they put the brain on us, and the brain gives you the illusion that this is all real. It's only the wiring of the brain that's telling you this. It does not exist. In the context of that, although the script is that we created the white boy, in the context of whatever we did down here, the white boy, by him not having a soul, which means he is not real, he's only a part of this particular realm, of this particular matrix. And the white boy, in actuality, this is the key, he does not exist. He's always kicking a lot of ass. He's 
feel like kicking a lot of ass. When we went to when when my girl tell nobody that he enslaved that he didn't exist. Let me show you something about slavery. See, even when you go even deeper into it, and this is one thing you must understand, when you go deeper into it, slavery was a part of the process. It said, out of Egypt I will call my son. In alchemy, which is the highest, the highest form of the Egyptian mystery is called the royal art. Mm -hmm. And the royal art was alchemy, mm -hmm. the learning of the soul and melody. Mm -hmm. In a section of alchemy, the ultimate goal of alchemy is to take something original and make something new out of it. Mm -hmm. It's called illumination through putrefaction, where you take something from one stage Take it to its lowest the common denominator, which is a form of 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 uh, 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 defecation or whatever they call it, mm -hmm. a putrefaction, a rot, mm -hmm. and you make something new into it, a new specimen. In actuality, the, the slave took an African and made a new entity out of it. Whereas, whether you like it or not. You believe this or not, I'll tell you the truth. In the 20th century, mm -hmm. from 1865, mm -hmm. you say what the fuck you want, and them damn Africans can say what the fuck you want. We were the pinnacle that all the other African nations follow. You mean African America? The Africans in America. Mm -hmm. We are the most unique brand of Negro there is. And no matter how much they claim that we are savages and inferior that the white man put in their head, they follow us. And they follow us and we are unique because we have gone through a process mm -hmm. that makes us like nobody else. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We are unlike anybody else. We are even unlike the Caribbeans. They still have a connection to Africa. You see it even in the talk and even in the, everything about them. Still have African overtones to it. Because mm -hmm. they was in a tropical land. Mm -hmm. We are the only people that have been made new. And whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. We have produced the most innovative inventions, genius, and intellectual ability. It's unmatched. You figure they talk about a Diop. Well, hell, got a damn Diop on every fucking corner. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not, I'm not taking up from the African, and I'm not taking up from the people of the diaspora. But what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, we have been the at the forefront mm -hmm. of running this stuff. That's just history. Because there's something in us in a transformation that we have gone through. No matter how damn degenerated we might look today walking around the ghettos or whatever. There's something in us that's unique. That puts us closer to the ancient Egyptians than the damn Africans. That's why we connected back with it. And this was prophesized. Hook that up with that uh, that Mellon study where they find a new. Um, exactly. It's good. Good you said that. Good, that. good. Good question. This point that I'm talking about here is illumination through putrefaction. Anybody knows if you go blind, your ears, your hearing becomes better. You go deaf, your sight becomes better. We were left for brain dead in the United States, which means that we were not functioning on our maximum brain level. But when that happens, the genius kicks in. You see, you're going to find out that we have two heads. Mm -hmm. One is the brain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a holographic brain. 
is only represents the five senses of, of appearances and awareness. But there is a appearances. The other brain is the pineal brain. In the third eye. Mm -hmm. As long as the physical brain, the one we have that we, we, we rely on every day, was functioning on a high level, the pineal brain, brain at this particular time had gotten to a point that it was dormant. Mm -hmm. Only some people get a tap, get a get a twinge of use from it. That's right. Now as a result, because other aspects of us are shutting down and deteriorating because we're not at the best thing that we were even after slavery. Mm -hmm. The other brain, just like the sight that would come on when the ears go, is now coming into focus. So because of the activity of the brain is shutting down at a rapid pace with black people in a racial senility, mm -hmm. the other brain is going to override it. And that particular brain is the Godhead. So in order for the Godhead to come in, you have to tear down the old to make ready for the new. So you must understand the way science goes. If you have a light, mm -hmm. the light of creation, mm -hmm. that light is going to the maximum of what it can be. In order for you to get a new light, you have to have a degeneration of that creation. Once that creation act is created, in order for you to get a new paradigm or a new aspect of that, you have to degenerate or deteriorate to come back even greater than the light that you had before. You see what I'm saying? You to come back to even greater than the light that you come before. So, the light That we have now, what they call the New Jerusalem, never to fall again, or the new what you call it. To get to that new plateau, you had to go to the deepest, darkest decay. Mm -hmm. And from that decay, the new light comes on. So the other brain is up under here, which has been helping us out through the years, but it's now ready to come online fully. Mm -hmm. And anything that you know, if you wanted to build a brand new building, then you already got a building in that spot. You got to get the big old ball and chain, or you got to get some stuff they call implosion, where they blow it up by using the force of the building, centrifugal force. Well, that's what's happening with us. We're being imploded from the inside out. You see what I'm saying? So now, to understand this on a on a scientific terminology. Correct. We have more than one double helical structure, helix structure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of DNA. Mm -hmm. We have several structures, but they were been they have been dormant because we've been in the physical body so long. Mm -hmm. Now because we are rising, what is happening is is there's a sister from, from Detroit that used to, there's good friends with um, uh, uh, Richard King, and she was telling me that she works in the hospital, and the white boys are studying the black DNA, and every day they find new amino acids popping up on it. Mm -hmm. And those amino acids are nothing but those new DNA strands coming online. Meanwhile, out in space, which is a reflection from some shit that's going on on the inside of us, at the Orion Nebula, they're finding all these clusters of stars being born. Mm. And planets. Mm -hmm. But what they're not telling you is, that stuff up there is called a holographic universe or a petty universe. It's only a reflection of what's going on on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. So just as those clusters of stars is being born in the several nebulas and the Orion Nebula, there's being energies being born in us and coming online. Mm -hmm. And that's those particular worlds that's coming online. They've done studies, even the book, Mark Balfour's book, The Sign of the Serpent. And as back as a conference in 1986 with 
black people, no, with, with, with white people that had this conference, and they concluded that the old Kundalini energy of the serpent that was lying dormant for thousands of years is now on the rise, as, 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 as well as 1986. So you can imagine the way it was then. Now, so as a result, when I was telling you about the projects and all that stuff, and they had to exterminate some people, with this Kundalini energy that was rising, they had to kill off a great deal of people because there is some truth to natural selection. The weaker, the, the stronger kill off the weak. They wouldn't have been able to take our energy. So in order to even live on the planet as they are now, by 95, they would have been dead if they hadn't. But don't worry about it, though. It's inevitable anyway. So the white boy is trying to kill us off before we... Well, no, actually, he realizes that he can't kill us off and live on the planet. But he's trying to control our population. He's trying to control the population for the simple doggone fact that too much of us on the planet, that energy will kill it because of the energy that's rising within us. Because it's just like any other uh, species that kills off the natural. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now let me tell you another thing about the white water that a lot of people don't understand. The European is not racist to you based on he's tart racist. The European is racist to you because he can't take your energy. Mm -hmm. I believe that. There's a certain energy that we have in us, and when it crosses his streams, he can't take the energy, and it yeah. comes out as racism. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. Now let me explain what how this energy is. Based on the science that we get, the white boy is a cross species of different animals plus some human DNA. And the human DNA is what gives him two arms, legs, hands, eyes, and all that. Although he don't look like you. But he has several, you know, ape, some ape, some pig, you see the white skin, some other stuff. His hair is even fur. So all the black women putting fur in their hair don't realize that ain't nothing but fur. Uh, nobody got, um, the only animals that, that's, that's got hair like us is revered as Christ animals, the lamb and all that type of stuff. But him, he's as fur and all the animals has uh, hair like him. But the point I'm trying to make is this here. I listen to this science here on how this particular racism works based on the energy. If you go into the forest or you go to the, if you go to the forest or you go to the jungle, the most strongest animal in the world, Everybody will tell you that those animals are scared of you more than you are scared of it. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You go, that bear is scared of you. That's what makes him attack. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why they say stand real still and all. If he don't feel threatened, he won't attack. The animals only are threatened if they attack. You understand where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. So this is the point I'm trying to make here. Since he's made up of animal DNA, the European, when he comes in contact with a human, that xenophobic fear automatically comes out, just like the bear does in the doggone forest, because he's got latent animal DNA. So therefore, just like the animals fear the humans, he fears the humans too, and we just so happen to be the humans. You see, we just so happen to be the humans, mm -hmm. you see. So he fears us, too, on that particular level, mm -hmm. you see, and uh, on, on that particular level. Another thing about this Viagra is by the time, most white boys, by the time they get 30, mm -hmm. it's over with them sexually. I didn't know that. See, they tell you that the, the white boys... They used to say it was for everybody, but it wasn't for everybody, it was for white people. The white man's sexual nature peaks at 19, and it's downhill from 19. You see what I'm saying? That's because he's, you're going to find out that what makes you sexual virile is the, is, the, is the connection between the penis and the pineal area, and the brain. Because it's calcified, he, he is, is, is incompetent also. So that's what they needed the Viagra to offset this thing. And that's one reason why the white girls was flocking to the black men in mass too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. the, uh, 
the, the, he can't perform sexually. And even if he does get it up, he's so inadequate down there until there's a certain rhythm that the black man has that to a black woman is just normal. We don't. They, it's just normal sex. But to a white person, they can tell the difference that the white boy don't have. Mm -hmm. You see, that, that the white boy don't have. So that's what they need the whole Viagra thing for. To to dog gonna try to bridge the gap, mm -hmm. which is melanin. You see what I'm saying? Which is doggone melanin is what this particular thing is. You know. Um, so, man, I'm telling you, as much as we may seem that we're not on it, we are really on it. You just have to look at the greater picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, have to look at the, you have to look at the greater picture. Mm -hmm. And too much we are dealing off of raw emotions. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You see. We still on yeah, I'm still we're dealing with raw emotions, so therefore we don't try to look at the bigger picture on the white way things are and why they are the way they are. Mm -hmm. We are we are in this position and all because this position was just the the weeding out station to make us better before we get to the other realm. And what I mean by that is, there's a quote in the Kabbalah that says that God, if you want to believe in the what you call, but it's still a good good. Good, good quote, because it's also talking about the higher God in us. It said, God put pain and suffering on the people that it loves. It says, so that they can use up everything in this world so that they can inherit, inherit, inherit the world to come. It is in the ones that he don't love that he let life goes by, go by, that he let life goes by with ease. You see what I'm saying? No, 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 it, it, with ease. So that they can have the best of everything in this world so there won't be nothing less left for them in the next world. You see what I'm saying? And basically we were just in a, in a period of a sleep. Now the Gnostic text says that in the last days man will be against man, woman will be against woman, woman will be against man, man will be against woman. Wrath, torture, murder, mayhem, and all that. But it also goes and says what these people don't understand is these people are dreaming dreams. And they need to wake up. And this is not a metaphor. Literally this is an illusion. You see what I'm saying? But it's only programmed again through your subconscious. And our subconscious has always dictated us by somebody programming and telling us what reality really is. And what is reality? A reality is only what you told yourself it was. That's right. That's right. My brother, yeah. Mr. Hemet, Bobby, good brother. I'm going to let you retire for the night. I want you to do one thing, though. I don't have a release for you to sign. And we do do some TV. So I'll need you to give me a release verbally on camera. And, uh, and that'll suffice. So you'll do what, the, the cable show? We do cable, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I may run this on the cable program also. Oh. I probably will run this on cable. Yeah, what, what else? That's the release. You're welcome to do it. It's time. <laughs> All right. And so you give me also release to market mm -hmm. and uh, everything. Yeah. All right. Marvel. That's right. Okay, my brother. Thank you. You got to give me my tape. Oh, yeah. You're going to get that. I'm going to set it right on the camera. You're going right. to get his tape. <laughs> Soon. <laughs>